email us at helpme at nurmuhammad.com so that we can give you the introductory email, gives all the links to all the sites and then an introduction to the meditation on how to do the breathing, how to put your position and, and to focus on the Kaaba, see yourself in the, in the presence of the Kaaba, breathing the light and energy. And then I think we have to eventually make a, a exact how-to meditation so people can understand from what we have on the website to the actual steps of that inshaAllah. Sayyidi, uh, 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 I'm missing the daily ura due to severe tiredness after one year. Is it a serious dangerous thing? Oh, I think we've talked, Alaykum yeah. Salaam, I think we talked many times on that. You're, you're not connected to that Wi-Fi and uh, it's, it causes difficulty. If you're not going to do the awrad, you're not connecting to a Wi-Fi that has a tremendous amount of protection and benefits. So imagine now your, all your life is on your phone, your bank accounts, your, your passcodes, uh, your, your mortgage payment, car payment, everything you have now on that phone. Think a day if the phone was stolen, oh my God what am I going to do, how am I going to back it up? They have off-site backup, all of that. Mm. Now imagine a day in which you have no phone connection, no cellular, no Wi-Fi, nothing. So why well, couldn't live without that phone? Oh but because that's something tangible in your hand and you understand. But the people of faith for them is much more important their connection because they're feeling it, they're living by it, they're, they're receiving these fires by it, they have a protection by it. So because you haven't reached to a level of faith to understand it, that's why they stress it is more important than your physical. That if you can live without your phone, your connection, any access to any information and that's okay with you then you know that's something different. But if you're relying on, on that connection for everything in your life in the physical world, imagine on what you're relying upon from the spiritual world, for the fires and emanations to reach to the servant, the blessings and, and the du'as to reach to the servant, the good character to change upon the servant. Without that emanation coming, without those lights coming, the change, the servant's character doesn't change. The knowledges don't come to the servant. Before, this, before you know the servant says, oh I'm not feeling anything from this path, I might as well be leaving it. And they begin to drift away from everything because they're just, you know, use it as an entertainment at first but it is more of a lifeline than an entertainment, inshaAllah. As Sayyidi, Sayyidi and all others, and all others bless, you all bless you for your services and providing live streams. Um, can I print the taweez until I can afford to buy them? Is it effective? Sure, why not? They print the taweez, no problem on buying it, just ask us to make a du'a upon it inshaAllah. And that uh, make the taweez that you have, send it as an email inshaAllah, we make du'a for you so that we, we make du'a for you as a process, it shows an ihtiram and a respect. Um, Sayyidi, are there certain situations where it is better to be stern than soft or should we always be soft? Yes Sayyidi. That's a vague question. At times to, to be stern and with what Allah wants and upholding what Allah wants and to be soft when it's involving what you want. When your character and your ego is involved then it's better to be soft so that other people are hard against you. And when it is what Allah wants it's better to be tough so that Allah's limit is upheld and Allah's way is upheld. You can't be soft with that where you let everyone do what they want and destroy everything of their soul's reality. So it's based on you know every condition. And is this an argument with someone that's based on my ego then it's okay, I have to be soft and let myself to be crushed a bit. But if this is upholding Allah's way and I let people to be soft and insult everything that I believe in, no. So there's a limit for everything and, and specific instance for everything. 
Sayyidi, how do we imagine ourselves at the Rosa Sharif of Sayyidina Muhammad and give our Hazri? And how do we imagine ourselves there as nothing? Oh, look at the picture <laughs> of the Rosa Sharif. And you close your eyes and see that I'm there just at the gate, holding the gate. And that listen to salawats while you're looking at that Rosa Sharif at the gate of Prophet and don't ask to see Prophet but just talk to Prophet. That I'm here at your Rosa, I'm, I'm nothing, I have a lot of sins, I'm not worthy of, of seeing you, send your nazar upon me see, Ya Sidi Ya Rasul Kareem. And you're listening to salawats and the beauty of the salawats opens from that faiz and that light and that feeling of nearness to Sayyidina Muhammad and efface and bring yourself down, don't ask to see, don't ask to see. Always talk in a way that, I'm not worthy of my eyes to see your beatific face, my sins are too many, I don't want them to be upon you and that, that, that character to be put upon you, I'm nothing. Just let me to be at your feet, let me to be at this blessed. Rosa and that your tajallis and light and love to be dressing upon me. So we always approach that reality with the immense humility, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing let me just to sit and then I begin to either breathe if I'm meditating, I listen to salawats and breathe. If I'm doing my awrad and zikr then I see myself at Rosa Sharif and I'm making salawats on Sayyidina Muhammad and build the relationship in which you're talking with Prophet Yes Sayyidi, forgive my ignorance. My question is, what is the difference between shaitan and dajjal? Shaitan is the race and dajjal is the, the one, he's a character, he's a specific personality that's coming and he's the leader of all the shayateen and he's from the shaitan race. So his, his minions are shayateen and of the jinn. There are shaitans who are straight out shaitans and then there's the jinn whom give themselves to the bad. There are different categories, shaitans are shaitans, they don't die and they have a different existence and they don't participate with anyone, they are out full for full destruction. But the jinn are different and the bad ones that give themselves towards that and then the ints, the humans that give themselves to that bad. So all those categories that give themselves to that bad their emir will be the dajjal, the antichrist. The, the one who's been written about that will walk the earth and that his eye will be bulging. And that we have talks and lessons on that, that when people compare to other people that they you're talking and he's also talking about Dajjal, no. The, these are the haqqaiqs of Dajjal on these websites. It's not just talking about it and, and giving you interpretation of the hadith, these are the understanding and realities of the holy hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad as these are from the knowledges of shaykhs who understand the three points up and three points down of the star. And they understand that the lights that emanate from the heart from insana Qamat, that the nur that comes out of the right eye and the ocean of hayat that comes out of the left eye in the perfected insan. And the reason that dajjal has a bulging eye is because he's blocked from the heavenly hayat. He has absolutely no power from heavenly oceans of an hayat. He actually teaches everybody just to have hayat al-dunya and not to believe in the hayat al-akhirah. And that's why his triangle is, is only of a 666 down because these are 60 degree angles of a downward triangle. It's not the same as comparing to other shaykhs, oh this shaykh is also talking about last days and eschatology, no. Is awliyaullah are teaching about the haqqaiq and the realities and the, the intricate reality of what that being represents and what that shaitan's characteristics and what his dress is. It's very different. 
to understand the energy he's using, to understand the, the hayat that he's using. That's why all his, his, his representatives show that eye because their eye is just the life of dunya. Come with us for the life of dunya and walk away from the life of akhirah. And they have no nur to deposit into anyone. So the kamil are sending a light and a nur from Rahman and sending oceans of hayat from a Rahim. Allah dress them from Sifat al Rahman and Sifat al Rahim. They've been dressed with Salamun Qawlun min Rabbi Rahim. So their eyes have been activated with these realities. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi, Sayyidi, Sayyidi. How, do you live, How do you live with family, family members family members who don't pray, pray or follow the commandments in any way? way what if their actions are causing spiritual issues in the house? And what if the actions of your family members are causing demonic presence in the house and causing more problems to the one practicing the deen? Walaykum As Salaam, then Allah gave you a big challenge. <laughs> What can you do until you have the ability to live in a different home and live under your own environment and have a job and take care of yourself, then you're exactly where Allah put you. So better to build yourself, build your character, do your salahs privately, do whatever you can to build your energy. That may be your motivating factor in your life. Allah has that Allah is the one who puts you in a condition. Fatih abwab is that He wants to open a door. So that condition maybe is motivating you to tune into this channel. Had you not had that condition maybe you would have not tuned in because everything would have been great. So everything Allah is the best of planners, little bit of you know shaitan's biting you Make you pray a lot, keep yourself in wudu, get a taweez. <laughs> means that Allah has the best of plans. If you have the ability and Allah opens for you your rizq and sustenance and the ability to, to be in a, in a place of your own then alhamdulillah. If Allah didn't then there must be a reason why you're in that condition. So use all of what Allah has sent and to fortify yourself, Allah if with you doesn't matter what a demon is doing, they'll move out. All of us have been tested with many demons trying to move all in and around and everything. When your practices are strong enough that light burns those demons and they run, they'll move somewhere else. They don't want to be in that presence of that light. So. Uh, related to that what you answered. Shaykh, I'm facing immense negativity and getting really bad energy from a particular institution and its people. However, I study there and had real hardships in education. Don't know if I should quit. No, put your taweez, get your practices strong and you, you go wherever Allah wants you to go. I, I fear not for I walk through the valley of death but I know that my Lord is with me. Never focus on the negativity, focus on building your energy and building your strength and Allah's great. There's no, no power greater than Allah But what it does show is a deficiency within our own practices, right? So when your energy is solid, your madad is strong, you, you, you have an immense connection, wherever you walk they're in difficulty. But wherever you walk if you're in difficulty then something's not right in the formula, you don't run away. Lose your career, lose your university, use everything, then tomorrow you say, I can't get on the bus because there's bad energy. I can't leave the house because it's bad energy. Before you know it you will now be like what they call OCD. Your mind takes over and begin to convince you you can't do nothing. It's not about defeat at all, it's actually about doing everything you're supposed to do and go out and walk out and Allah with you, make your, your practices strong. As Salaamu Alaykum Mawlana, what should we do if we can't focus on one shaykh during our daily muraqabah and keep seeing different Naqshbandi shaykhs every time? Then do whatever comes to your heart, alhamdulillah. But remember that the mind has to be controlled. 
So like a tourist and you're on a bus and instead of getting to your destination you're more interested in the scenery. So I want to go here, I want to be here, I want to connect with this, I want to connect with that. And before you know it you got off the bus and you're going all around to all the different the souvenir shops but you didn't get to the main place. So as much as your heart tells you connect and whatever your heart connects with stick with that and keep the focus that I want to go to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad I want to be at Rosa Sharif and I want to be addressed by that. But as far as your day-to-day -day shaykh you have to ask that shaykh that you listen to taking guidance and direction from enter into my heart. Don't ask that you're going to be dressed by his tajalli because you're not taking yourself to his maqam but you're asking for his fayas and his light to enter into your heart and overtake you. Not at his level to go to him but you have to ask that your light enter into my heart and to dress me, to guide me. That, that should make your life much more clear. As Salaamu Sayyidi, uh, may Allah bless you all. O oh, Sayyidi, thank you so much for everything and thank you to everyone helping you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Allah bless you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That talk wasn't about yeah, even thanking me to my face, it was, just, it was about an outside observer realizing we don't, uh, we're not very thankful people and if this is the school of manners, where's the manners of all these 4,000 people watching? So that, that's about that and show thankfulness to Allah and to Sayyidina Muhammad And that's what's important in our life and we'll do that with everything and everyone. And there will be thankful servants and Allah inshaAllah save us because of our good character and good mm -hmm. Salaamu Sayyidi, what are some of the signs that show that we are connected? Is it sakina, tranquility only? People can think calmness is just carelessness, like you don't bother. No, to show that you're connected you have to feel the fires of the shaykhs, alaykum as -salam. Calmness you could be downloading an app, <laughs> that's not calmness at all. The tariqahs you accept the tariqah, testing will begin, agitation and aggravation will begin. To know that you're connected means I'm supporting, I'm participating, I'm watching and I'm meditating. When I'm meditating I'm feeling that light to enter, I feel the faiz of the shaykh is all around me because it's real, it's not a philosophy. Then you know you're connected and you're supporting and participating and at every level you're, you're trying to get their nazar and their attention. So there are people who email and just say, shake your nazar upon me and, and grant me my seven uh, nafsas, nafsa amara and, and open everything. <laughs> That's always the, the funniest ones, they just grant me, gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give my name is Jimmy but it's wrong. It, the, the bayat is, is that you're not going to come and take bayat, right? I'm coming to take bayat. And then while I'm at it, can I have your jubba too? Can I get a cane? Can I get a tasbih? Can I, can I, can I, can I? You're actually going to give your bayat, right? Because then they're gonna push you and shake you down for everything. You're gonna give, you're gonna give, you're gonna give, you're gonna give until you show that you are with them, that you're locked on and you understand and they're going to give you from what Allah has given to them of their reality. You're not coming to take anything from the shaykh, but you're coming to give yourself to the shaykh. That's why you can't email that, I'd like to run away to, to somewhere right now, can I go? Mm. You can't be here and do that, <laughs> you have to run away. You gotta stay in it. But if you're far away, yeah you can. <laughs> you can't leave the presence of a shaykh, physical presence of a shaykh, you run away. Run away from where? Where will you find? Like new sun, I'll find a mountain higher. Not if your mountain is here, you belong in that ship and that ship is where your safety until these coordinates come to you. You run outside of that ship, you're outside of that umbrella of protection.
Saidi, forgive me if I'm wrong, what is the reality of the Bermuda Triangle? Absolutely no idea. <laughs> There's too much sci-fi channels. So that was those channels when you watch those… Uh, those <laughs> that was a talk last week. If you watch too much of that TV, you think you're watching the TV but the TV is actually watching you. And they start to give you this channel, this channel, this channel, this channel. There are just many strange energies on this earth. Don't, don't worry about that. Keep focus right now to connect our hearts with Sayyidina Muhammad and the fitna of, of Dajjal that entering and all the, the systems that he's putting in, in place to, to make a, a difficulty against the heart of the believer. That Allah give us this time to improve our connection, improve the madad and to connect to this heavenly channel and this heavenly fires that enter into the hearts of the believers as a najat and as a guidance, as a huda, as a, a guidance for their reality that they're going to need in very dark times. Just a lot of people thanking, thank you, saying thank they've, you, thank uh, you, because of your advice, your advice they've overcome many big hurdles in their life and thanking you and especially but ever since they're reciting their daily wazifa, they overcame a lot of anxiety and depression so they're thanking. Good, good, alhamdulillah. Keep doing it and inshaAllah support and uh, keep reading the, the app, the du'as on the app, uh, keep reciting the different du'as and for the du'a ayat al kursi recite that seven times a day for anyone who feeling any type of energy coming after them. Uh, reciting Du'a Mandur, which is the du'a of the Sultan and awliyas of the time that asking by their fires, their blessings that to recite those du'as to take any type of, of difficulty away. And then inshaAllah Allah dress us, bless us and give us from these holy nights uh, immense oceans of rahmah and mercy inshaAllah. And Jummah Mubarak to everybody inshaAllah. Uh, someone is from uh, the Qadri Silsila and just wanting to know if it's okay to take a bayah with the, with the shaykh. Sure, inshaAllah all the bayahs are, are to the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad and that your relationship with the shaykh has to be one of learning. So there must be a, a knowledges coming through and there must be a way of communicating so that you can get your guidance and your coordinates and a way of supporting. Those, those elements are what keep the relationship with the shaykh and the student flowing. So as long as we're able to keep these connections and this knowledge is able to reach to people and as long as you're able to communicate back what your coordinates are then alhamdulillah everything is, is safe, everything is good. That way you, you can get the fayas that you need, the guidance that you need, the understandings you need and to make your connection to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. Someone just asked a question on the Facebook, what to do if I, if I have a high screen use given everything is remote work, school and how to get rid of that energy from technology? I guess they have to be in front of the computer all the time. All the time, yeah, programmers are like that and all our computer people are like that. You go home and you have to wash, you just keep yourself always in wudu. Keep yourself with the taweez, keep yourself with Salatul Wudu. Uh, when you go and, and shower at home, you shower visualizing in the water that your soul is just whirling and, and washing away all these negativities and water becomes an immense reality in which to wash away every type of negativity. And then you combat that also with your eyes to see positivity. So by watching the videos, watching the YouTube so that your eyes are not only immersed in an ocean of badness and technology but immerse your eyes in an oceans of, of these knowledges, these teachings, these realities. You got to balance the system, right? So you watch the YouTubes, you watch the teachings, and there's so many thousands of hours of that so you can balance it when you go home to watch something good, watch something positive, watch the… if you like watching Netflix, watch the, the life of the, the, the Sufis. You see family? <laughs> Yunus. <laughs> Yunus. <laughs> so many others, Yusuf and me. It's coming soon. Yeah, but Yunus for now. So that also it gives your eyes, you know, the, the halal candy. 
So that you watch it, understand the tariqah and, and give good thoughts into your heart and into your mind inshaAllah. So a quick clarification, quick clarification on the, on the daily, daily awrad. 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 So the, can we do awrad quickly awrad. at any time without awrad. being in a separate awrad. room awrad. if there's a difficulty awrad. to follow the proper awrad. protocol of awrad? Yeah, you, you can be in your car going to work if you can't be in a room. And the candle and the fabric is not needed, those were extra but they added it in for some reason to the app, it should be out of the app. The, the daily awrad has nothing to do with the candle and, and, and a white fabric. That was just a, at a higher level if you're going to use it as a meditation you would enshroud yourself and late at night you put a candle and meditate. But the daily awrad can be just done right before you head out the door, you can do the, the dhikr Allah in the car going on dhikr of Sayyidina Muhammad the salawat on the way coming back. So it can be broken up, it just has to be done on a, on a daily basis inshaAllah. Then you can go home later and sit and make salawats as much as you want and, and meditate. Meditate is then to sit and to do your breathing and connecting your heart and then that's a whole different other than doing the awrad inshaAllah. Meditation is, is to connect your heart and to build a spiritual relationship with the shaykh that to bring the light into the heart which is going to be the light of faith. I'm asking the shaykh to send the fires into your heart, send this light into my heart and to illuminate my heart with what Allah has, has given to you on your soul so that that light comes. With that light it comes the light of Sayyidina Muhammad and Allah's immense blessings so that it keeps coming, coming, coming until the heart can be lit which the student feels they've been caught on fire, they're, they're heated up every time they start their practices and that's a good sign. It's a sign that you, you're, you're getting it and you're making the connection is if you're able to heat up. If the shaykh can heat you up and you heat up in your meditations and in your practices, your candle is now lit. Now you have to sort of nourish your faith so that it keeps growing, keeps growing, this light and this love keeps growing within the heart. How to, develop, How to develop, discipline develop discipline to do morning, to morning practices, morning, 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 particularly, morning, please morning, suggest, morning, suggest, morning, suggest, morning, suggest, morning, suggest morning, any tips for how to be disciplined in the morning? How to do the fajr? Or just a discipline on how yeah, to be how disciplined, to be I guess they can't wake up or… Yeah. The, the only way to do discipline is you got to then go to bed earlier and drink a lot of water when you're sleeping. Before you sleep try to drink a large amount of water. So the whole night you have to keep getting up to wash, every two hours you're washing, every three hours you're washing, that way you sleep a little bit lighter. Don't go to sleep so in a heavy deep sleep that you can't get up. And you train yourself because you have to make your wudu, you make your wudu and you have to wash because you can't go back to bed without wudu. So you have to throw water on yourself, wash, so then again you're interrupting that deep sleep so it's a much lighter sleep phase and then you're up. Every time you're up you have to pray your wudu, Salatul wudu. But one of those times you're going to hit it around 4.30 whenever the fajr is and you can start doing your fajr at that time. So you have to just keep disciplining yourself on how to trick yourself to get up. What is the easiest? Shaykh, is time travel possible? Time travel? I've met the Thai of course it's. Time is a constant. And it's a page on a book. So, to move in the world of light you can move back and you can move forward. But that, that requires a permission from Allah So for the believer it's the duality of light. The light is a, is a particle and a wave. At a particle we see each other in a form. But our wave reality is our light is, is emanating everywhere, everywhere in this time. From beginning of time our light to the end of time that light. So how to reach to the world of light is to free ourselves from the world of form. That has a much deeper understanding, those are all the spiritual practices. When Allah opened in the last days for Sayyidina Mahdi is this haqiqat al-tai inshaAllah. That the believer with Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem step and to move to wherever dimension Allah want and wherever location Allah want for them.
what they understand in movies is little bit but they don't understand it. There's a new movie that came out that's something about going backwards as they're moving then everything would go backward when they're moving that Oh yeah, Tenet. 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 That was the make sense, it's just I got too excited from the other movie he made <laughs> and that would be way off. If you go in forward in time then everything would be going backwards. Mm. They, they don't put in account in their knowledge to Allah When Allah created creation they are merely just pages of a book. So every moment stays in eternity. This moment of ours is a page, mm. eternal, it shifts. Next day is a new page. But in the world of light if they free themselves from physicality they enter into the world of light. If Allah want to show them 500 pages back they enter into that page and they can be present at that page and for them at that time would be present. But not, not something they understand. So. See there's a lot of uh, people asking uh, about bayah and this one person saying, I want to uh, say this, alaikum, I want to take bayah but I'm afraid. What if I will not be able to do what I need to do? Should I still go with bayah or wait for some time? And there's many people asking to take bayah. Sure, there's nobody, nobody can do what they have to do. If it was a matter of being perfected then we wouldn't need bayah. It's a matter of knowing that I'm nothing and, and that I'm in need of help, Ya Rabbi, I'm in need of a support and that from whom you granted that support for all that support to reach all of us. So this is not a school of perfected people, we just started off saying that nobody's even saying thank you when they watch the videos. But this is a school in which to teach about perfection, that what we're doing wrong like a hospital where nobody knows they're sick, this is the hospital in which everybody's being told how sick they are so that we can try to fix ourselves, perfect ourselves and to re-educate ourselves on what Allah wants for His satisfaction. So definitely this is a path in which to perfect ourselves and not for the perfected. You have the, the sheet for the bayad that was out, outside today, uh, Shamash? There's a sheet out there on, on my thing that had the, the bayad inshaAllah. Um, Sayyidi, Assalamu alaikum. What is it when feeling of pressure and, ex and expansion and physical feeling in the heart? Is it good? That like everything else is a contraction and expansion. That Allah's names that are Jalal which is might. So any type of, of a majestic dress it causes a contraction. Because the heart, the body, the chest will all be contracted by a majestic dress. And Allah wants to dress the servant with a majestic tajalli. Those nights are nights of haiba, in which majestic lights that come and they come to destroy badness, they come like a fire upon the insan. Then jamali is when there's an expansion. So means after every contraction there must be an expansion. So when they contract Allah is raising the servant. When there's a, a, an opening it's a jamali, it's a beautific dress and the jali of beautific oceans where they feel like they want to cry and everything is beautiful because Allah is now dressing from that station. So that which you crush is actually being raised then become soft in which they can be dressed and blessed by what Allah just raised them with. So it's a continuous contraction and expansion and that's similar to why the woman has contractions and expansions, why? So that this new insan can come out. And the earth also mimics the womb of the woman because the earth is in a continuous contraction and expansion, this is what you call earthquakes, continuously quaking, quaking, quaking. That Allah described that which is hidden inside can become known. So the reality of the soul wants to come out. So Allah will crush and then raise, crush and raise. But now the reality is coming out for insan, inshaAllah. Inshallah, ready? 
A'udhu billahi min shaitanir rajeem Inshaallah with niyat uh, Bayat and Naqshbandi Silsila under Sultanul Awliya Ma'an Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Dagestani, Sultan Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, Ma'an Shaykh Muhammad Adil, Shaykh and 41st Shaykh of Naqshbandi Tariqah under the blessings and barakah of Shaykh Hisham and Shaykh Adnan and all the awliya Allah for Naqshbandiyat al Aliyah. A'udhu billahi min shaitanir rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Inna ladheena yubayyunaka inna ma yubayyun Allah, yaad Allahi fawka aydihim. Fama naghathu fa inna ma yaghuthu ala nafsi, wa ma naufa bima ahad, Allahi Allah fa sayyatun ajran azeeman. Radina billahi rabban wa islami deenan wa ba Sayyidina Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rasulun wa nabiyun. Wa bi Qur'ani kitabun, wallahu ma naqulu wakeel, wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa qabilna ba Sayyidina Sultanul Awliya and I'm accepting Sultanul Awliya ma Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, ma Shaykh Abdul Faiz Dagestani and the 41st Shaykh of Naqshbandi Tariqah, ma Shaykh Muhammad Alil, Shaykhuna wa Murshidina under the barakah and blessings of awliyaullah ma Shaykh Adnan, ma Shaykh Hisham Kabani. Wallahumma naqulu waqeel Allahu 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 Haq Allahu 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 Haq Allahu 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 Haq Ya Rabbi illa sharaf al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi wa ashabi kiram wa alam al-shaykhina fi tariqata nashbandiyyat al-aliyya khasatan ruhi imam tariqa gawta qalika shah nashban Muhammad Waisi al-Bukhari Satana awliya Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Daghestani, Satana awliya Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani, Mawlana Shaykh Hisham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani, Shaykh Muhammad Adil, Mawlana Abdul Khaliq al-Khujduwani, Sahib Zaman Sayyidina Muhammad al-Mahdi a.s., Ruhullah Sayyidina Isa a.s., Sayyifullah Sayyidina a.s., Thumma Sahib Bakr Siddiq, Sayyidina Ummah, Sayyidina Uthman, Imam al-Hasan a.s., Imam al-Husayn a.s., wa Sayyidina Fatima al-Tizal a.s. Wa sayyiru wa sadatina wa siddiqina al-fatiha. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi wa sallam alaykum wa rahmanu rahim, Malik ya Muqim. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nista'in, ahdina sirat al-mustaqim, sirat al-ladina an'amta alaykum wa ilu ma'udhu 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 wa 